Hello, grade sevens. For today's lesson, we're going to work on subtracting mixed numbers. And today we're going to focus specifically on mixed numbers that have like denominators. So here's a sample question here. Two and three quarters minus one and one quarter. Our first technique is going to be using fraction strips. And here we've got it illustrated. We have two full ones and then three quarters, representing the first mixed number and then subtract one full one and one quarter of a strip. Now make sure that they're all the same length. Uh, we want to make sure that they're the same size so that uh, visually we can spot what we're doing and make sure that we're doing it correctly. So now we've got two holes and one uh, in the first number and we're subtracting one hole. So two minus one leaves you with one whole strip. And then over here we've got three uh, quarters of a strip shaded, so there's three pieces there, minus one uh, piece that's shaded here, so three minus uh, one gives you two. So our answer here, in fact, is one and two-fourths. So we've got one whole strip and then two parts of the fraction strip left. Now, of course, we can write this in lowest terms as well. We have one whole one, that doesn't change, that stays constant. You only ever change the fraction part when you're putting into lowest terms. So in this case, you should be able to visually see that um, half of this strip is shaded. And in fact, you can break it into halves instead of quarters and still have the same amount shaded. So instead of two fourths, we actually have one half. Um, and that's why we use fraction strips that are the same size. Uh, if these were two different lengths, we wouldn't be able to compare them properly. But right now we can see that half of this strip is shaded. So we can convert it to one half instead of two fourths. So the second method is to use a subtraction statement. This is where we get down to working with the actual numbers. So same question here, two and three quarters minus one and a quarter. So you can subtract the holes. 2 minus 1 is 1, like we did before. Uh, but then you can look at subtracting the fraction part separately as well. So 3 quarters minus 1 quarter. And we know because there's a common denominator that we can subtract. Um, so that is equal to 1, which is the whole, plus we can do 3 minus 1 over 4. We can do that because we have a common denominator. And then we know that 3 minus 1 is 2. The denominator stays the same at 4, and we've got the whole number in front. So that's basically how that works. It's not too terribly challenging. Uh, but we also don't have this quite in lowest terms yet. We can take 2 over 4, and we can say it's equal to something else. Now, if we list 2 and do the factor tree, or factor tower, 1 times 2 gives you 2, and that's all there is to the factor tower for that. For 4, we've got 1 times 4 and 2 times 2. So we can see that the common, largest common number here is a 2. So we're going to take these numbers, and we're going to divide by 2. We're going to divide by 2. What you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. So two, 4 divided by 2 becomes 2, 2 divided by 2 becomes 1. Now the process is what's important here. Yes, it's easy to spot that 2 over 4 is the same as 1 half. That's easy. It's the process of finding your greatest common factor to divide into the numerator and denominator here. That's the trick. If you had a fraction that was much larger, you might not be able to spot quickly how to reduce it. But if you follow this process, of using the factors, then you'll be able to get to your uh, lowest terms much more quickly. So 2 fourths becomes 1 over 2, which means, as shown here, 1 and 2 fourths becomes 1 and 1 half. So that's all there is to that one. Now, it's time for a show you know. Please go ahead and do that. 